In some ways, these people are richer than the people in the city. <laughs> So as you can see here, the people behind me, they're just uh, doing their praying. I'm surprised that this hasn't been filmed in a movie scene. Mm. Okay, so we've now just started our walk around the uh, monastery. Yeah, that's, that's probably about 30,000, 40,000 US dollars. I feel really blessed to be here. I'm so glad that you guys can be with us and enjoy this. Our YouTube or g'day and good morning guys from the beautiful Tibetan Plateau here in China. Today we're exploring more of rural China, seeing the real China beyond the cities and beyond the headlines. So currently behind us you can see there's a beautiful herd of cattle here with some baby cows and uh, some farmer people over here and also some more farmers in this tent here. And we're going to start the video off today by seeing if we can go see these farmers in this tent and just see what they're doing. here they've been eating some watermelon there's some watermelon pieces on the ground and uh, yeah they're just living in this tent so our guide Ben from Elevated Trips is just going to ask them uh, if we can have some tea with them so let's see by the way this is totally random we don't know these people at all we're going <laughs> to knock on their tent uh, so as you can see here this is all of their food so different raw meats cooked meat here fresh vegetables and uh, this is their little stove where they boil their water for tea Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. So a little bit awkward, but expected when you go up to a random tent in a random part of China and ask for tea. <laughs> but uh, these people are really friendly, and they didn't say no. They were quite nice. And they're uh, here for just one day. Yeah, they're here for just one day, uh, herding their cattle, and then tomorrow they'll go to another part. Yeah. So tomorrow they'll just go over the hill here. So maybe about a half an hour to. 40 minute walk mm, and they'll take their cattle and then they slowly just move on to the next destination. So yeah, these are nomadic people. Uh, they live out of their tent with their cows and uh, they make money from selling their cows once the calves get bigger and uh, from meat and stuff. So we just thought we'd start the video off today quite uh, raw and real and uh, just showing you uh, yeah, the local people out here and uh, yeah, their nomadic lifestyle. So really cool. And as you can see, it's very beautiful out here with the blue purple flowers. And uh, Dad's with us today as well. Good morning, Dad. Good morning. <laughs> and we've got Ben as well from Elevated Trips. Hey guys. We uh, these cows out here. Each of these are. Uh, I know this life looks kind of poor to a lot of people, but these cows are probably about four thousand quiet, a little bit less than a thousand U.S. dollars per cow. You know, and they'll probably sell them about five, six years old for for meat at the local market here. So uh, you know, these women have probably about a little herd of about 50 cows out here so you know that's that's probably about 30,000 40,000 US dollars just roaming the, the grassland so while it kind of looks like a, a poor setup to us you know to our Western eye as we look at these tents and the simplicity here and it is a simple life it's a rugged life but also you know this is this is basically their bank account and they're taking care of their bank account and herding them from valley to valley and grazing on the grass in these mountains yeah that's super interesting you don't really think of it like that do you yeah yeah that's 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 fascinating yeah so there you go in some ways these people are rich than the people in the city <laughs> so yeah <laughs> certainly emotionally richer <laughs> <laughs> that's right Sophia so could you cool. live in a tent like this in a mo nomadic lifestyle maybe for a few months but not forever yeah I'd, yeah. I'd be the same to yeah. be honest just yeah. to have the like experience experience yeah, yeah. and uh, you can see their cattle's just over there and uh, two of the um, their family members are just watching them to make sure that they don't wander off and uh, lose a thousand dollars per cow because you don't want that <laughs> so it's important to keep an eye on them where are we at the moment then so right now we're driving to Shachung monastery it's a super remote monastery in the middle of nowhere uh, almost no foreigners have ever been there yeah well so you heard that no foreigners so that's what we like on this channel we show the real and raw things that haven't been on youtube that much so yeah i'm excited to see this monastery today and uh yeah this is just a first little pit stop and then uh we'll have many awesome things to show you Okay, so 
so we just stopped off on the side of the road. I'm gonna hike up to this little monastery thing here. But before I show you that, I just wanna show you what's over here on this wall. And it's gonna surprise you guys. <laughs> so as you saw from last week's video, we saw that they burnt yak poo as a source of fuel for the fire, right? Mm -hmm. Now, have a look at this. <laughs> this wall is covered in shit. <laughs> All the way along. They do this in Nepal also, in village. Oh really? Yes. Yeah, right. So what they do is, the yak does a poo, they get it, and then they just go slap, and then this will dry, 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 dry. And as you can see, this one here is a bit darker, so it's quite fresh. This one's more dry. And then I would say, these people living just here are using this one. And uh, yeah, what a way to dry it. Yeah. So you guys might also be wondering like, what are these papers littered everywhere? Because even in last week's video, we saw this and uh, I'm not too sure. Ben, what, what does this mean? Okay, uh, you can see it on this paper. Yeah. This is a horse. Okay. Uh, so in Tibetan, this is called Longta uh, or wind horse in Tibetan. And so a lot of farmers come up here and they're like, why is all this trash on this mountain? But this actually isn't trash uh, for Tibetan people. This is a form of worship. They come up to this uh, high pass where it's thought that deities or spirits live on this passes and they throw these uh, long horse, uh, wind horses up, or long da, up into the air, and it's thought that as the wind carries them through the air, that it's kind of carrying prayers for compassion for the, the villagers of this oh, city. Okay, right. The more you know. Okay, yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah, cool. Hey guys, we just saw this big hole down here. It's quite big. Let us know if that's rabbit hole or fox hole. I would say it's probably fox. I mean, I wear a size 12 US shoe and that's almost the same size. So yeah, let us know. But yeah, as you can see, we're already up the top now. And uh, yeah, it's quite a beautiful view, I have to say. Not just the, uh, not just the little shrine here, but also the view. It's so beautiful. Oh, check this out. So once again here we have the arrows inside the shrine. Yeah, it's really, really interesting. It's actually a sign of peace, no more fighting. And uh, yeah, that's what the villagers used to do because they used to fight with each other. One day a guy stuck it in the ground and said, no more. And then from there, people have started to put on prayer flags on the arrows as a sign of peace and uh, Buddhist practices. Oh my gosh, that is crazy. Look at this view, guys. So beautiful. You don't even see that in the movies. No, you don't. Yeah. You don't. And this is what you see from Tibet, guys. Wow, so stunning. I'm surprised this, this hasn't been filmed in a movie scene. Mm. Absolutely beautiful. got to this beautiful monastery behind us and uh, yeah, we're gonna walk around here and explore and uh, learn about the history of this place and also the founder of this place which is actually this guy here but uh, I'm going to He's tell the you founder of the yellow hat is it founder of the yellow hat yeah, yeah. so uh, very clever <laughs> so I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit more about this place in just a sec Now 
we're going to go for a, a, about a half an hour walk all around the entire monastery. And this monastery is actually on a whole cliff side and we're going to be walking around the side uh, to see that. So it should be really, really for good hour. for an hour. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. I thought it was half an hour. Okay. So as you can see here, the people behind me, they're just uh, doing their praying and you can see here they come down onto the ground and come back up. You might be thinking, like, why are they doing that? What's the importance of that? Well, I was just talking to Ben, our guide, and he was just saying that uh, it's part of uh, their process to get enlightenment and better reincarnation. And also they may be praying for, um, you know, a sick grandma or something like that. So it's super interesting. So they might even do a thousand of these in one day. And uh, Ben was just telling me that a uh, monastery actually down the road, one guy did it for 12 years and his footprints were imprinted into the wood this thick because he stood in the same spot for 12 years and you could actually see like the individual grooves of his toes. That's how much he did it. Okay. So you're probably wondering, Jack, how do you get data when you're in China? How do you access Google? How do you access YouTube? How do you access Instagram? If you don't know what an eSIM is, a eSIM is essentially a app on your phone where you can download a eSIM in any country that you like. For example, the night before, before I flew to China, I was in Thailand and I went onto the Nomad app, I clicked on China, clicked on the plan that I wanted and installed the eSIM on my phone. As soon as I landed in China, as soon as I touched the ground, I could turn on my phone and have data working fine, just like that. Also, Nomad is available in over 170 plus countries. I use them everywhere I go. Japan, Singapore, Nepal, Thailand, Malaysia, you name it, Nomad has probably got you a eSIM package. Another thing I love about getting an eSIM is you already know what the price is going to be when you purchase it. And the prices on here are really affordable. So use my code JACK92CB for a little bit of money off on your first purchase. Uh, I just wanna ask Ben, can you just tell us about the significance of this place and a bit of information? Sure, so this is Shachong Monastery, one of the six holiest Gelugpa monasteries in all the Tibetan Plateau. And what makes this monastery so holy is that it was founded in 1349 by the mentor of this guy, way back here in the background, the big golden statue, wow. Song Kappa. Kind of a legend among Tibetan Buddhism, and he actually founded the Yellow Hat sect, or the reformist sect of Tibetan Buddhism. So that is uh, Song Kappa, and he studied here from ages four to 17, and then he went to Lhasa to go on to found the Yellow Hat sect, or the Gelugpa sect of Buddhism. So this monastery is largely dedicated to him. Wow, so when you say yellow hats, is that when mm -hmm. sometimes I see monks wearing yellow? Yeah, so if, okay. if you see like a big moon-shaped hat, yep. uh, very, very common. A Gelugpa okay. sect is actually the most common sect. So yep. the yellow hat happens to be the, the newest, but also the most popular, uh, not only in Tibet, but also also in Nepal and across Bhutan as well. Wow. Yeah. So we've now just started our walk around the uh, monastery here. So we're gonna see some really, really good views. We actually saw views when we're up there, up the top. So it should be good to see. And we have our new friend here. And we have our new friend. Hello. Ni hao. Ni hao. <laughs> so yeah, we've got our Chinese dog. And we've also been giving it some beef jerky. So I think that's why it's our friend. Not beef jerky, actually, yak jerky. Who knew you could get yak jerky? Okay, so we've now made it down to the boardwalk and uh, they sort of call this like a little pilgrimage thing, but to be honest, we're just going on a nice walk for us. It is so quiet here. <laughs> so quiet and beautiful, right? Like, look at this view behind us. And we can hear the sound of the bees, yeah. right? And I think we should be very careful and silent while walking because we don't want to disturb them. Yeah, disturb the bees or the animals. Yeah. We just saw this like chicken looking bird thing. I'll show you the footage here. But yeah, it's really cool. So this whole area is super, super quiet and the amazing boardwalk that they've built, it's so beautiful. It's amazing. So one really awesome thing is when we were just back in the monastery, these uh, lovely Tibetan family was inviting us to eat with them. And they said, please, please come and eat. And we used our translation apps and different things. And we were trying to tell them that we're actually a bit busy. We had to come and do this and they were going to eat now. So it was a bit tricky, but uh, yeah, it just goes to show how kind the Tibetan people are. 
and just so hospitable. They spoke no English, but yet they wanted to sit with us and have we a meal. We were surrounded by Tibetan people. Yeah, we were just surrounded. Yeah. Yeah, and none of them spoke any Chinese. It was all Tibetan. Uh, so yeah, super, super cool and really, really lovely. The people here are so nice. you can see that we have the beautiful blue river here but it's actually called yellow river and ben why is that this is the yellow river and uh this is one of the longest rivers in china it, most of it flows with a lot of this brown rock inside of it which gives it kind of this yellow hue but where we are in qinghai province we're just a few hundred miles down from the source of the yellow river the yellow river actually starts right here in qinghai province and uh we lead towards there which is really it's a beautiful place to go wow so yeah. today it sort of looks a bit blue right it is blue. Yeah, it yeah. has this kind of emerald green. It hasn't quite gotten as, as muddy or turbulent or polluted as uh, downstream. So it's actually quite nice to visit because the, the, the waters are quite pristine up here. Yeah, wow, amazing. I feel really blessed to be here. The view is just st stunning. And then you can hear your echo here. Oh, give us a try? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's can you hear cool. that? Yeah. Yeah. And I love how you can see it. The hills and the cities and the river, literally everything. Yeah. So um, I'm so glad that you guys can be with us and enjoy this. And uh, we are so thankful that you guys watch our videos because this allows us to travel and then explore and show you guys what is not really seen on YouTube. So thank you so much, guys, for watching. So we just finished our little walk there and now finally Pretty lunchtime. Tired and hungry. Tired and hungry. Lunchtime. To bed and lunch. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. Okay, so we just got our Tibetan noodles here. So let's give this a taste. Okay. Got some meat in there, a little bit of vegetables, and big thick noodles. Oh my god. Really, really tasty. Mm. Nice, right? Good, yeah. yeah. It's really good after a big hike to fill up. So yeah, we're gonna devour this. Okay, so as promised, we absolutely devoured that noodles. Oh, so it tasty, so right? so good. So good. So uh, now we're going to the city of Repcon, uh, which is the Tibetan name. So we got about a two hour drive and then, uh, yeah, we'll reach our hotel and then have a lovely dinner tonight by the river. So let's go. just stopped off for a little bit of a stretch about halfway now to the city and uh, we're right next to this beautiful little creek just here and uh, yeah this entire area is so beautiful and lovely so untouched there's a few houses scattered around here and then you got your power poles but just driving through here you know these Chinese roads uh, they're quite good these ones are just concrete not car but uh, yeah beautiful beautiful scenery I have to say though, one thing that I'm finding super interesting about traveling around this region in Tibetan Plateau is the wildlife. You know, 
It's uh, we're really seeing like animals and bugs and birds that you don't really see in the Chinese cities. Uh, obviously, when you build a city, all the wildlife gets pushed out. It's quite refreshing to be in China and really experiencing China for its real nature. I guess you know this is what China would look like, you know, 300 years ago. So we are really seeing the real China, and uh, yeah, it's absolutely lovely. And uh, one thing as well is there's actually a lot of uh, Muslim. Ethically Muslim people out here. Hello. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can see that guy here. He's a Muslim person out here. Not to be confused with the Uyghurs in the uh, very far west of China. Um, so yeah, super interesting to see that. <laughs> So we just checked into our beautiful room here and wow, what an amazing day. It is not over yet, we are going to go and have dinner. But I think I'll end the video here and just show you guys what we had for dinner uh, down by the river. So thank you so much to Elevated Trips who are with us traveling around this remote region here in China. It is quite hard to travel around here by yourself, especially with public transport. Yeah. So if you really want to see the real China, check out Elevated Trips in the link at the top of the uh, description. They're the best. They're the best. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, keep it real. Cheers. Cheers.